uh, a little after six, and we'd like to just call this uh, informational meeting to order. And I want to welcome to Wyndham Joe Winrip, who um, was the chair of the Act 46 study committee, uh, which Wyndham did participate in. And um, uh, we decided that there would be an informational meeting in basically every town, and then there'll be an additional one down at Leland and Gray. Um, but Joe is here to present that. Uh, to you. Um, there was a request for a projector. The emails did not make it to the proper people. And we don't have a projector anyway because we have projectors in the rooms with whiteboards. So Joe's going to wing it. And um, it's been suggested that you can also watch some of the other meetings if you want to see that material. Uh, you can go to the blog spot and see that. And also, um, uh, we, you can send it to someone. We can I, have the, it. I have the PowerPoint presentation <clears throat> as both a PowerPoint and a PDF. It's so whopping six slides, and the last one just says questions. So, I mean, I could get it to you by email if you want to give me an email address. Um, and like Carolyn says, it is, on a, it is on the blog with all of the other Act 46 materials that the committee's work looked through as we've gone through this whole process. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'll try and describe it a little bit, but really it was just sort of a, a sort of a placeholder category for the information that I give you. Um, this presentation is really brief. I mean, we're talking 10 or 15 minutes, um, pretty high level. Um, really what, um, what the committee was doing with these information meetings is coming out to um, answer as many questions as we possibly could before you go vote on town meeting day. Um, and if there is a question that we don't have the answer to, we've committed to get it. Um, we just went to press with our second mailer that contains all the questions and the answers from the first three informational meetings. This is the fourth, and then we have the fifth one is March 1st at Leland and Gray at 7 o'clock. So, so welcome, Joe, and thank, thank you for coming to Wyndham. Thank you. Thanks. So I'm just going to sit down and, and like <laughs> tell you the story here. Um, it, it's really 10 or 15 minutes. Um, the, first, the first slide that we have really talks about the uh, diverse background of the WCSU, how you know, we have uh, literally every school model in that's possible. You know, we have one town with K-12 choice, two towns with <coughs> K-6 schools that operate and then have 7 to 12 choice. One town with a K-8 school that then choices after middle school. And then we have the Union's high school district Union Middle High School District that has five towns that operate K-6 schools and then send their kids to the <coughs> Gray. Um, we have schools that are in this district that are connected by dirt roads only. Um, that's like Dover and Marlboro and Wardsboro. They're contiguous, but you really can't get from one to the other. Um, and you know the geography and the weather contribute to the difficulty that um, the WCSU had in trying to put this stuff together. Um, you know, we do collaborate pretty well at the supervisory union level, but you know, under under Act 46, we were tasked by statute to study this and see if we could do better and more. Um, so, the next slide then talks about that there are two separate proposals here. There's a there's a proposal that Dover, Marlboro, and Wardsboro are studying. That's a separate side of a district um, that would operate. K-6 and then choice after that, <coughs> Marlboro would actually give up, uh, give up the uh, middle school. They decided that, that that made more sense for them. Um, on the other side of that are the five Inland Gray towns studying consolidating into <coughs> one district, which would be known as the West River Education District. Those two districts then would be what's called a side-by-side -side <coughs> under the law. So there would be one board that was on the top of that, similar to the WCSU, and then there would be a board running each side of that district. Um, you know, um, these proposals um, it are in, a, in the WRED, the West River Education District. There are five towns. Newbrook, or I'm sorry, Newfane and Brookline are listed as necessary towns because they're already a joint contract board, so if one goes, the other has to go. The other three towns, Townsend, Jamaica, and Wyndham, are listed as advisable towns. That means that 
this thing, this, uh, the West River Education District could form even if one of those towns says that they're not interested in forming. It does take four towns to do it. If, if two towns say no, it's not going to happen. But, you know, it could form with two. Um, it's important to know that because of the way Act 46 is written, there has to be a K-12 district within a side-by-side. -side. So if for some reason the West River Education District did not form because more towns than one said no, no matter what happens with the vote in Dover, Dover Wardsboro, and Marlborough, they can't exist. Um, they would then have to go see what alternatives they could put together with the state, and there's talk about, you know, could they take that district and go to another, another supervisory union? But there, you know, they, there is there. What we do impacts them. Is is just the point there. So, um, anyway, that's what that's what the actual decision is on town meeting day. Um, that's a good question. Sure. Uh, New Fan and Brookline are linked, and they have to say yes, or they, they both have to say yes. If one says no, okay, then it doesn't form automatically. Okay, um, but if they both, they you know, they both have to vote yes. But then any one of the other three towns could say no. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, so um, the next. Oh, good. I may have to get, I may have to bust out my laptop and get the, uh, I suppose I have two page ones, no page three, and a page four. Um, that's what happens when you wait these things. Um, so the next slide, as best I can remember it, talks about some of the advantages, um, some of the advantages to the students in this. One of the things that we've done in this is that we've made choice amongst the elementary schools a possibility for the students. So, you know, we don't think there's going to be a lot of student movement necessarily, but someone who perhaps lives in New Fane and works at Grace Cottage could have their child at Grace Cottage. I know in Townsend years ago, we had the situation of a Townsend Elementary School teacher who lived in New Fane, whose children had to go to New Fane School when she was teaching at Townsend. And it made just transportation and pickup inconvenient for, for that family. Um, we also envision the ability to move staff around within schools because there's a single employer. Um, not so much that we want to um, have rotating staff, but I know um, I serve on the Leland and Gray board, and we, as enrollment declines, we've looked at, well, we don't need a full-time teacher in this subject. Um, and sometimes we've been able to offer them half time in one in one area and half time in another area. Sometimes we can offer them a half time contract and hope they stay. But if that's not enough, they're they're out. Um, in this situation, we could have high school. We could have teachers who run out of you know who don't have enough work to keep them busy in one school, work in another school as well. And there wouldn't be that now. That's impossible. You know, that just doesn't work because there's multiple employers, multiple contracts, and you can't have a half-time teacher splitting their time between an elementary and a high school, or two elementaries. Um, unless, of course, you do, some of the things we do do is we have music teachers and gym teachers who are itinerant, who are employed then at the WCSU level. But this would allow that to expand. Um, we also see opportunities for um, more unified curriculum more uh, collaborative curriculum, and also um, some of the things, um, you know, there are schools that have really great programs in one area. We can now allow that program to move to another school. Um, you know, you could always do it before, but now, you know, there's a single, there's a single over, uh, point of oversight, there's a single group. Um, and there's more ability to say, hey, let's figure out how we take this program that's really awesome in Wyndham and get it down to some of the other schools because, you know, everybody can benefit from this program. Um, there are also, there's also more opportunity for these things to um, be discovered as the new board works. 
Um, the new board, <coughs> the board for the consolidated district would be elected at town meeting day, as well as you know, as well as the decision as to whether the consolidation occurs. They don't actually start running the schools for two years, and that two-year period, the the um, WRED board would work with the existing uh, district boards to to smooth the transition and um, you know explore the opportunities for. Um, improvements for students, better equity, and also more efficiency. Um, we talk on the next slide a little bit about, about those efficiencies and what we can expect in terms of a cost savings. Um, you know, definitely, you know, the fewer budgets we're running, the fewer audits we're going to have to run, the fewer districts we're running, the fewer, you know, there's less accounting costs, there's probably less, a little bit less legal cost. There's the ability for our educational leaders to spend more time leading educationally and less time traveling around going to meetings. Um, you know, we will drop the number of meetings that are actually being held um, by each individual district. So that will free up time that's now spent by the superintendent and the business manager and, and the central office staff and the principal, really, preparing for these meetings and, and going to them. Um, and then, you know, we also talk a little bit about the financial ones. And the slide that I really wish I had for you is we run into a lot of questions about, you know, well, what's this going to do to the taxes? And, you know, nobody has the crystal ball, but we did take this year's budget numbers and plug them into the tax rates and then say, if this consolidated district existed, where we had the benefit of the lower tax rate and the benefit of the consolidation, what would the tax rates look like? And everybody's tax rate went down some. Some were more dramatic than others. I think the lowest, the smallest, um, the smallest decrease is three or four cents. The largest is 14 maybe. But I really, I, I should get this PowerPoint email to you guys, but it does actually impact that and taxes do go down. Now part of that is because there are the four year tax incentives of eight, six, four, and two cents as it goes forward. Um, and after that, we don't know. The other thing that, the other financial incentive that um, we, need, we talk about is that right now, three of the five schools in the Leland and Gray District receive small schools grants. If, if you don't consolidate, the, this law says those small school grants go away. If you do consolidate, they're changed to what's called a merger support grant, and they remain. For our district, we're talking about $211,000 a year for the, with com, combining those three small school grants. And um, you know, at the new FAME meeting, someone asked uh, the principal and the superintendent what they thought about that. And um, they both kind of said, well, you know, <laughs> we'd like to do this with as much resources as we possibly can. So leaving, you know, leaving that on the table is not something we're interested in doing. Um, so that pretty much is the rest of, it, is the uh, financial incentives. Again, there may be, one second and I'm done and it'll be question time. Um, there, there also may be more <coughs> savings to be realized as the new board takes over and starts looking. You know, that'll be another thing that, that the boards are looking for as they, as they begin their work um, after the vote happens. So that's really every slide. I really apologize for not having that here to show you. Um, I will email it to you. It's on the blog site. Um, I'll make whatever you need to get it. I can make that happen. Um, and so the last slide is just literally questions. So um, you know, anything you want to ask me, I will. I do apologize. I want to write them down just so we can mail them out. Um, and then uh, if I don't have the answer, we'll get it for you. Yes, sir. I think I've seen this already. But what's the makeup of that new set of goals? Oh, thank you. That's a good okay. question. I, that's actually on the slides. Um, Newfane has three, it's by population. Newfane has three members. Townsend has two members. Jamaica has two members. Wyndham has a member. And Brookline has a member. And then um, we also have two at large members on the board. Those would not be elected until 2018. <coughs> and they would be elected from the towns that actually form the district. We had to quickly amend our articles because we had them being elected in 2017 and the state uh, 
the State Board of Education attorney said, well, you could have a town, you could have an at-large member elected from a town, theoretically, that voted not to participate in the consolidation, which would be a nightmare. So now the at-large members will be elected a year after the, the regular members. More questions? about in the um, Act 46 committee discussions right. nearly yeah. nearly as much as it was when we were looking at the red consolidation <laughs> a few years ago. Um, just because there are so many, it's a little bit different because we'll have a, another side and, and um, you know we're not sure if that makes sense. I mean it certainly would be something that the new board could look at, but it is not nearly <laughs> the, um, the uh, it doesn't have any of the support that it had before. Anybody else? Could any of those schools be closed? Um, the articles provide that schools cannot be closed without a uh, without an affirmative vote of the town. Mm -hmm. So, yes, schools could close but the board would have to convince the town that has the school that it's a good idea. Um, so it's difficult. It's not impossible. Um, but I think, you know, if the board can make a case that the school is not serving its purpose anymore or, you know, that the students will be better served by an alternative structure um, and the town believes it, then yes, schools could close. But a school could remain open even, even if it had a very, very, very small number of kids. Yes. Yeah, there are no limits. If no children, if for some reason, you know, with school choice and everything else, um, literally no students choose to attend a school, um, that, that is grounds to close the school under the articles. But, um, you know, there's no way to, like, move school children around um, underhandedly, like, no, you're all here and sneakily get them out of your town and close you. Um, it would have to be, you know, it would be one of those where it's like, you know, nobody's going there, um, closures. But otherwise, it would have to be, the board would have to make the case to the residents of the town that, and they would have to agree. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Beth? I just wanted to, um, it's not a question. I was at the, um, I'm not on the school board anymore, but I was at the information meeting at Leland which Joe was at, and there was, a lot of people um, sure. in January um, for the first budget. Oh, this is a Leland Great budget. Meeting. This is just a Leland Great budget. Okay. But anyway, the, the bigger issue, um, just to keep in mind, as you investigate Act 46, which obviously you should, it's something that Ernie Friedley, who's been a long time community, community member, has brought up a number of times. One of our bigger issues um, that people feel strongly about is addressing the funding system. Um, that there is a, <coughs> a very convoluted funding system where um, there are many points to it, and each town really only has control over one of those. Um, and there was a committed group at that meeting, which Joe can attest to, and that, I believe, is on film. Um, people showing up for their support for Leland Gray, and also forming, and there have been meetings since then um, between teachers, parents, community members, um, addressing Montpelier and addressing the funding system which to me um, is more important to look at. Um, actually, six to me is a band-aid, um, and this is addressing something bigger that affects all schools. One of the interesting points that were made there, um, if you go beyond your threshold, if you hit the penalty threshold and you're spending too much. Which we did. Somebody said, what happens to that money? And that money goes back into the system, but out to other schools. Not our own schools, not our own children. It goes out to other schools. That's what we do now, um, right? And so, thank God. Um, so that's just something I, I, I hope people understand, um, and I can get you more information. There were legislatures at the last one of the last meetings, teachers, community members. Um, Kim Friedman 
who had two children go through Lynn and Gray, and who was, I believe, in social services, um, very active in the um, <coughs> youth of our community. Um, she was the one that, that started this committee. Dan DeWalt, who's a teacher at Lynn and Gray, and they're very much wanting to address Montpelier. I was glad to see the Lillian Gray budget went through, because um, in the meantime, that is something that's happening. So I'd be happy to get more information if you have any questions on it's that. An important, it's an important thing. I mean, the funding formula is, <coughs> is um, convoluted. Um, but you know, the, it's, a, it's a separate issue. I mean, Act 46 moves forward whether or not we're addressing the funding formula. There's no pause button. Um, you know, if the consolidation doesn't go through by 2018, the Secretary of Education comes up with a plan, um, and by 2019, um, consolidation is done to you rather than doing it voluntarily. If that's what they decide for us, um, you know, we don't we don't know what that will be. I'm certain there will be some opportunities to um, contribute to that. But um, you know, I have also heard that we already came up with a really good consolidation plan. The state board liked it; they approved it. Um, they might just implement what we've already come up with. <laughs> so we don't we don't know. We don't know but, um, if student populations continue to decrease at the rate that they have been, is this still a good plan in the mind of the people that kind of put it together? Um, it it certainly, uh, as far as I know, I mean, it's hard to speak for them. Um, I mean, at the committee, yes, we think it's a good plan. I just wonder if um, that was like discussed or yes. Um, well, because you then you're you're a larger district, so the declining enrollment then should hit you less hard. Um, you know, the the example of Leland and Gray's budget. You know, we we lost our our whole harmless protection for the amount of kids we lost. So all of a sudden, instead of pretending that we only lost you know three percent or five percent. We actually had to take the entire 20 students that we lost and deal with that loss in the budget, um, which is what happened to, you know, which is what screwed the gray budget up. Um, you know, with with a larger with a larger student pool, the declining enrollment um, should have less less effect. I mean, it won't be so dramatic. Um, we, you still have to sort of be aware that you know. Unless the funding formula changes and it's not based on, um, you know, per pupil cost, um, you know, you you've got to be able to run schools for what you know per pupil for per pupil cost that makes sense to your taxpayers. Um, I'm thinking about transportation, <laughs> and you know, this is such a small school. Um, Maybe I think it's the small. Is it the smallest one in, in this group of schools that are? It's the smallest one in Wyndham Central that I'm. Yeah. Yeah, it's the smallest one in Wyndham Central. Um, yeah, but I'm just wondering about how a, a small school like this deals with the cost of the transportation. <clears throat> that you know, I mean, like we have our own bus here. Um, but would that continue that way, or would it would it become a a, a um, district-wide uh, program for busing, I mean, how would that how would that work? I mean, it's going to be one of the things the new board looks at um, <laughs> in their two years is what makes sense for transportation. Um, you know, right now a lot of this <coughs> transportation is district is district-wide with one busing contract. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it it I don't honestly know what why it's not that way with Wyndham, what makes more sense. It, it may be just that by the time West River brings a bus from where they keep them to here to pick up kids and bring them here and then bring them back, you've put more miles on the bus doing that than just housing them here. I, I don't know. Um, that would certainly be something that we would look at and if that the, that, that board would need to look at. And, you know, there's no, I mean, if it makes sense to continue to run a single bus for this, because of its location, I would think that they would do that. They're going to be looking to do whatever makes the most fiscal sense. Um, you know, yes, Carolyn. Well, I can help answer that. One of the reasons we, we run our own bus is because over the years we've looked at various proposals. Owning your own bus and hiring a driver, um, hiring a company to do it, 
And um, there was a third option that we looked at. <clears throat> and it turned out that owning our own bus, bus and hiring our, our own driver was the, the most cost effective way to do it. When we asked, um, uh, at the time it was Alpine Meadows to do it, uh, it's now something West River Transportation, it was <clears throat> way more expensive. And also, the local school board would have you know, more knowledge about who needed to be picked up and that sort of thing. Right now, we're really fortunate uh, in that we just purchased this new bus. Part of the reason that our budget sort of went up, it didn't actually go up, but because of the way special ed is accounted for, um, there's a, 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 an increase in the per people spending. But um, uh, we're very fortunate to have Cord Scott uh, as our driver, he's done a fantastic job. He knows the kids. Um, you know, he gets them off to a really great start every morning. So, um, but cost effectiveness was really the reason that we <coughs> chose that route because it really was significantly cheaper than any other way. I, the longer I'm learning about Act 46 and what its possible results are, I, I think I'm more and more concerned about some overall things. Uh, and what I'm concerned about are a couple of things that I keep hearing. Uh, and that is um, statewide, right now, we don't have equity between school districts. In spite of um, the Brigham legislation and Act 6 and so on. And that's a real concern, that there still is an equity between the school districts. And the other thing is the sustainability of what we're doing now. Um, we've lost 20,000 students in the last uh, few more years, I guess, roughly since we've been here maybe a few more years before that. But we've lost no staff, not at all. The staff has stayed the same. So the cost keeps going up and up and up and up. And uh, one of the real purposes, I think, of Act 46 is to stabilize things. So it isn't continuing to go up and up and up. At the, at the New Fame meeting, our, our past uh, business manager, Frank Rutger, was there because he's a resident of New Fame and um, really gave us a little bit of a primer on um, the disaster we're headed for if we keep doing what we're doing right now, just underlining the fact that it's not sustainable whether we like what we're doing, whether we don't like what we're doing, whether we whatever, it's not sustainable like it is right now. That is a concern. <coughs> yeah, Frank did a very good job with that. Um, you know, I wish I could bring him to all these meetings, but Brattleboro yeah. snitched him away from <laughs> Wyndham Central, so. Joe, could you describe for folks how the budgeting would work in terms of, you know, would would all of the towns, let's say this were to pass and all of the towns were involved, would there be one big budget? Um, because I, I know there was some confusion even on the part of some of the study committee members, to, even at, almost to the end, uh, about how the budgeting would work. Um, and I, I can sort of describe it if you'd like me to. But <laughs> well, as far as, I, as far as I know, the plan is to have one big budget, similar to the Leland Gray budget. Would that include the Marlboro, Wardsboro, no. Dover? So no. be a they're a separate budget. side. Yeah. Marlboro, Wardsboro, Dover is okay. one side. They would have their own budget, and then the WRED would have its own budget, which would be Leland and Gray and the five, um, presumably the five sending towns. Um, and then, you know, schools would be line items in the budget, and, you know, you, so there wouldn't be separate, you know, we wouldn't have to say, like, okay, this is the, you know, just like you now have the Leland and Gray budget where there's the art department, there would be the, the Wyndham School. Um, it, would be a, it would be a subset of that budget, but it would be one large budget. I'd like to say something. Um, despite my participation in most every one of those Act 46 study committee meetings, 
I'm still very unclear about the logistics of the so-called increased or improved student opportunities by sharing, um, by sharing schools, by having students attend several programs or all days or some <coughs> days of the week in different schools or just part of some days in different schools and how that... We're not going to move students around to different schools. That's well, but that was... No. I thought that's what we discussed. No. Never. We don't want to move students. If, we, if we're going to move staff, that's one thing. If we're going to try and keep a teacher full-time employment by giving them a couple days at an elementary school and three days at a high school or you know, two days at this elementary school and three days at this elementary school or something, that's one thing. But we're not going to move students around. Um, you know, you're going to do some of your time here and some of your time here. No. That may not have been the final decision, but that, I do remember that I being remember discussed. That discussion. We talked about it, but it, we, <coughs> we pretty yeah. quickly realized that there was no sense in that. Um, the one thing that actually made some sense, but the location is a problem, is if we were, if we were to have um, somehow develop a middle school that was close to Leland and Gray, that was you know the, the six, seven, eight middle school in a separate building, like but there's not really room in Townsend to do that or whatever, that middle and high school could walk across the, the common and share some classes. You know, I know a lot of Leland and Gray students go to the Townsend Elementary School for um, co-ops and, and some of the classes, and they help there. Um, you know, and that, that actually made some sense, but the committee, you know, moving kids, putting a kid on a bus, you know, to go to a different school this day and a different school this day just didn't make any sense to anybody, um, you know. Well, I was confused about that also because I know I when it, uh, Leland and Gray does have a more study program, <coughs> it's coming from Leland Gray up to the farm, and that was one of the, the topics was perhaps because Wyndham does offer farm school once a week, um, and actually um, the Leland and Gray in the middle school, Bob Tebow, um, Jason Sperling, the social studies teacher, and uh, Mrs. Skowski Dope are talking with Lee Marinoff, the owner of the farm, about providing a middle school farm school. And I thought that was one of the issues that that was something that was attractive to people that perhaps other elementary school students could benefit from what we provide here in Wyndham. So, oh, I um, very vividly well, remember that Well, but that, that would be still, <coughs> still be, Wyndham has this farm school program. This is a great example. Your kids go to a farm and, and have class at a farm once a week or once a month or whatever it is. Yeah. So, Townsend would do that, or Newbrook would do that, or maybe if we could, it would be up to the the um, the board to the district to work it out with the farm. Maybe um, you know every other Wednesday is farm day, but now not just the Wyndham kids come, all the elementary kids come that are interested in it. But it wouldn't be that the Townsend kid to get the farm school program would have to go to Wyndham that day. They would be. The, the program would expand, and just like you know, the, in middle school or, or high school, when we're moving the co-op kids, you know, the, they go to school, they then go to their co-op, and then they come back to school. Um, yeah, so, the other grade, the co-op kids that normally drive themselves, so this right. would be back to what Jane was talking about was transportation for elementary school kids. Um, yeah, no, I, I thought. Well, we'd have to figure out what made sense. Um, the boards would look okay. at it and yeah. see. And the cost. <coughs> Yes. So where, where would a town, a town as small as Wyndham, where would our home budget get generated from if we have one representative and that person's meeting down in Townsend rather than here? I can't imagine. Can you tell me a picture of how that would work? Um, same as the Leland and Gray budget. Um, you know, the meetings, the meetings would be wherever the board decided that it made sense to hold them. But where is it generated? Who, who's coming up with our budget? How do we convey what your, our school needs? Well, I'm not sure how your budget is done now at Wyndham, but um, you know, generally the principals and the teachers kind of say, and the budget development is done with the principal and the business <coughs> manager and some of the superintendent, and you know, then it's presented to the board as here's what we think we need. Um, and the board discusses it with them and says, well, we think we can do that. And then the taxpayers come and put their input in and then you know, it goes. It would be the same process. So we would be missing a letter. We wouldn't have a school board. You, 
the whole right. the whole board would develop the budget for everyone. There would still be input from each town to that larger board um, by and by the principal and by the administration and stand by the citizens if they felt they wanted to show up at the meeting. I mean, we had we had plenty of Leland and Grace citizens show up, and I'm sure some of them were from Wyndham. Um, you know, it, the, you don't, there wouldn't be, there would be a layer of not a Wyndham board, but there would be this new board, and that board would represent Wyndham as well. What I've been concerned about is the fact that the budget that we develop here is only one part of this whole scheme of coming up with the budget for the state. What results from that is that the town of Wyndham right now has a, uh, a tax based on, which results in a tax rate for the town. We raise about $1.3 million for a $400,000 budget. That's what we send to the state. <coughs> Under this arrangement, do the towns that get together, then every town has the same tax rate as a result of it being one budget that's apportioned out? Well, the tax rates aren't identical in at the end of it all because CLA still works in there oh, still um, works. and all of that. But it's similar to the Leland and Gray. There's a Leland and Gray portion of the tax rate, and that's the same to every town now. So the West River Education District, the tax rate, the base tax rate out of the Education District would be the same across all the towns. And then whatever other factors um, influence that tax rate would would then okay. Be so it doesn't well. equalize the budget, of course. Okay. Ernie, you were here earlier. Ernie, yeah. I mentioned earlier how you've often talked about sorry, the funding system, and that is something that's being addressed. There's a committee that's gotten together after uh, the January Linden Gray budget meeting that is addressing that issue that you have spoken oh, to for years. Um, there's a committee group. So. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody else? You mentioned that if there's no consolidation, then these small school grants, totaling 211,000, get go away. I guess. How, how big a loss would that be? It um, don't I'm work. sorry. It doesn't go away. Or the 211 is in perpetuity, right? Well, if there's no consolidation and the small school grants go away, oh yes, they um, two hundred eleven thousand. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the total budget of the new district would be. Um, it's not. It's probably a percent or two of the total budget. Um, you know, but it, it's you know it's what three teachers across the district. You put it in human terms, <laughs> it, it, we would notice it. Um, it, would, it would be felt. I could tell you what to say. Well, <laughs> I believe that because Wyndham is geographically necessary, that even if we do not, if this is voted down, we will continue to get our small school grant. Um, other towns that are part of this will probably have their stopped but I believe we will continue to get ours. There's a question about geographically <clears throat> necessary. They haven't sorted out what that rule is yet. Right. So everything, everything, every time I've ever mm -hmm. asked, it's been, well, we haven't decided exactly how that's going to be yet. Um, well, and but we still are deemed geographically necessary. Right now, but that's is. going to change at some point. There's going to be a new determination as to what's geographically <clears throat> necessary, and there's no guarantee when it keeps it. There is no guarantee, but I will say that I have looked at other states that have this category. And in terms of our distance from other elementary schools, you know, uh, we pretty much meet. Uh, I think there may be one state that has, you know, nine miles from another school um, is the cutoff. So we're 10 or 11 from any other elementary school. You know, and even if even if that if, if if there is no consolidation and Wyndham keeps its small school grant, that just helps out the bigger picture when they force us to consolidate. And or if we, more money or if we decide to do an alternative structure. Did Did you see what Senator Bruce said about that? 
but it's not. He's saying that you know the alternative structure is not so that you can do everything that you want to do. That basically you have to do all the consolidating that you can before they're even going to consider you for an alternative structure. Well, that is the Senate, isn't it? Well, and we're the House. <laughs> well, that's the interpretation. That's it's like hmm. Well, Senator Baruth is Senator Baruth. He comes from Chittenden County. He represents Burlington. Oh, and he can have his, his opinions. <laughs> and then there are other members of the House who can have other opinions as well. Right. So. <coughs> I do not find out which opinion is correct. I think we'll just get it done. And as we stated before, I mean, there's no guarantees of that 46, right? That, as you said, after the next four years and then the sense goes down, there's no guarantee that the cost won't go back up. Oh, absolutely. But there's no, there's so no guarantee my, of taxation in any way. My biggest hope is that until the data is out there, I don't want to be a guinea pig. I don't want to be a guinea pig for, you know, I, my kid is in her last year here, so, you know, I'm good. I've gotten the best from Wyndham that there is to offer, but I, you know, have other little kids that I deal with on a weekly basis, and I want to see them have the same opportunity. So. You know, as every single one of us loves to live in the state, I think if we have to, and this was Dan DeWalt's plea with people, is give us a chance to figure out the funding system. We might have to pay a little bit more, but, you know, these are kids, and they're, they're worth it. So I don't know enough about F46. I've been leery about it when it was 153, and it was the red, and it was the mud. And I'm sorry, but... <laughs> How many times do you rename something if it's just not working? So I just I really hope people well, the look big difference, into this. The big difference between um, 153, 156 and, and this one was that the red was voluntary. It's like uh, the incentives are all pretty much still the same. The consolidation is all pretty much still the same, <laughs> except for that was voluntary. It's like, hey, take a look at this. This might be a really good idea. See if you can put it together. And not enough people took a look at it and, and thought it was a good idea. So now there's all those incentives, but then at the end of it all, there's the stick too. Well, if you don't do it, we're going to do it to you. There's a plan, and then we're going to impose this, and you're going to consolidate, and, and you know. So this is this is really a lot the same thing, but me, there's just a stick really, with the carrot. That's a miserable threat, and as a democracy, I just don't see how that's something that if we choose to be proactive, I don't want to be threatened like that. I don't I don't think that's okay. I'm not. A it's rabbit. kind of like the state energy plan. Yeah. Really, that, you know, that's kind of what it's happening with. Yes. How many consolidated districts are there in the state? Um, I couldn't tell you. I know that there have been quite a few consolidations um, throughout the state, and you know they're finding out that they and the consolidated districts are happy. But I can find that out for you. Uh, I'm curious if there are small towns like Wyndham that have been consolidated, and, and could we get their opinions on how it's worked for them? Um, <coughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one. I, I can find out how many consolidated districts there are. I, I don't know. I think it would be hard to find out if there's anything like Wyndham. I know there are small, you know, I, I can't tell you which senator it was that said, you know, we were trying to tell him how isolated we were down here. And he said, well, until you've been to my district, you don't even know what rural means. And he's up in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, and he, I don't know which one, I can't remember which one it was. I can tell you what he looks like. Um, so, you know, there probably is somebody who's similar, but, you know, I don't know. But I, I can tell you how many districts there are. I will find out. <coughs> Anybody else? May I put out the slides? Good job, Good job. If anybody wants an email with the presentation. I um, actually presentation. compiled a p email. Is this, did everyone get a chance to write down? Bernie, would you like to yeah. get your email on this too? Okay. So this email list, you all want a copy of the uh, PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. PDF okay for everybody? Yep. Right. Else it's a smaller it? file, it does the same you thing, it just doesn't you know, dissolve. <laughs> if you think of other questions, there, um, there is the blog spot 
Um, there is an email address on the WCSU website. Um, you should have all gotten our first mailer. Um, there you go. The second mailer went to print last week and should show up sometime this week. Thank you. Should show up sometime this week. Both of those mailers have contact information for all the committee members. Um, so if you think of something else, you know, um, let us know. We'll do our best to answer any questions you have um, so that you can make the best informed decision, you know, the most informed choice on town meeting day. All right. And I want to just quickly add that all the meetings, all the study committee meetings were televised. Thank you. <laughs> and they can also be viewed by whoever is interested. So they're either on the website or What is the, the website? Blog. I don't think that's actually on this first page. That's just on Brattleboro TV, bctv.org. Okay. Um, there's a, you can get the Act 46 meetings there. Go watch the um, last one in New Fame. You can see the PowerPoint and you can hear Frank Rucker explain how the funding system looks down the road. He's towards the end, probably 45 minutes in. Thank you, Joe. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the blog is on, it's, it's a blog site. It's like WCSU LNG. Is it on the thing? No. no. no? If you go to the WCSU website, which is um, windhamcentral.org, there's a link to the blog site on that. I think I included it in my article uh, for um, Windham News and Notes. Yeah. And it's uh, WCSU dash lgtowns.blogspot.com slash slash Check out your news and notes. Alan has been passing that around through the email for yeah. the town. Uh, so yes, that's true. You could talk to either call the town office or something and they would get it to yeah. you. Yeah, I know there's a link off the Wyndham Central page yeah. um, to the blog spot. Um, and to all the Act 46 agendas and notes and reports. And so all the information that the committee saw is, is there so that you can look at anything we saw. Um, and then the blog spot has like frequently asked questions and I think it has all our emails on it so you can you know, talk to us whenever. Um, you can't sleep at night, look at the BCTV and you can see them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so thank you very much for coming out.